We're now starting a unit called moles. This is without a doubt the single most important day of chemistry. The moles are the currency that we're going to work in all year long. No matter what, you have to make sure that you understand today's lesson. Um, starting with, I'm going to start kind of abstractly. First of all, make sure you have your periodic table handy. This will be impossible without one. Okay, I know that one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. I know that one mole of helium weighs 4 grams. nitrogen. Could you figure out the pattern here to tell me how many grams one mole of nitrogen weighs? If you said 14, you're right on the money. When you look at your periodic table, when I find nitrogen on the periodic table, there's a 7 up here, an N, and then written underneath it is 14.0067. It also says the word nitrogen in there, but I couldn't quite fit that. You've likely learned somewhere along the way that this is what's known as the atomic number. N is the symbol. 14.0067 can be referred to as a whole bunch of things that are almost the exact same thing. For example, it can be called the atomic weight. It can be called the atomic mass. It can be called the molar mass, the molecular mass. The one that we will use most commonly is going to be molecular weight. All of these things actually mean slightly different things, but for all practical purposes, we're going to use them as the same. Whenever we need to use the molecular weight of a compound, we're going to use the nearest whole number. So you're going to round to the nearest whole number with two exceptions. Those two exceptions. For chlorine, I want you to use 35.5. And for copper, you're going to use 63.5. Everything else, round to the nearest hole. There are some others that are kind of halfway in between, but none that we work with is often both in practice problems and in lab as these two, copper and chlorine. I realize I haven't yet explained to you what a mole is. That's okay. I understand we're going to use it as a little bit of a black box for now and keep moving forward, and then we'll go back and tie the pieces together. One mole of nitrogen weighs 14 grams. How much do you imagine if I had two moles of nitrogen, it might weigh? If you guessed 28 grams, you're correct. What about if I only had half a mole of it? It would weigh 7 grams. What we have just created here, or worked with without you realizing what we're doing, is our first formula of this unit. Grams equals moles times molecular weight. Another name for grams again, if we say mass, we typically mean grams. Moles, molecular weight. We need to look at some molecular weights for things that are not pure elements, like if I had a compound. So for example, if I wanted you to find the molecular weight of a compound like SO2, we would need to find the individuals and add them up. When I find sulfur on the periodic table, it's right underneath oxygen, I see that it has a molecular weight of 32. Oxygen. <coughs> has a molecular weight of 16, but I have two oxygens. <clears throat> so since I have two oxygens, I need to double that value. And when we add this up, we get a molecular weight of 64. Perhaps we had something like 
ammonium phosphide. Ammonium phosphide is NH43P. <clears throat> now I need to take parentheses into consideration. The reason we ask you to learn how to count numbers of atoms is for this reason. How many nitrogens do I have? This three distributes. So I'm going to take the molecular weight of nitrogen and multiply it by three. I have 12 hydrogens. Each hydrogen has a molecular weight of one. And I have one phosphorus. So adding this up, 3 times 14 plus 12 plus 31 gives me a total molecular weight of 85. Now there's a couple of molecular weight problems for you to try, and then we're going to come back and work more with this formula.